everyone, it's Brandy. I'm here with this little piece today and I'm gonna do a look that I've done in my own home where I used some Dixie Bell colors and made it a sky scene on my ceiling. So this little three door chest that I'm starting with has a base of two coats of Dixie Bell Haint Blue. So I'm gonna skip that part. A very simple base, two coats of Haint Blue. Um, I have not put any clear coat on or sanded or anything from that. Next, I'm going to be using Dixie Bell Sea Spray. And I'm gonna use this to add some texture and variation um, to my cloud texture. So I took my Sea Spray and I have about a half a scoop on a paper plate here. Um, sea Spray is a powdered additive. Next, I'm gonna take just a spoon here. I'm using Dixie Bell Cotton and I'm gonna add a little bit of paint into my Sea Spray. And then I'm gonna mix these up. And the Sea Spray, um, thickens your paint to make it a paste texture and then when I put this on my piece it's going to leave a textured finish and I'm doing this because for for this look I want to have a little bit of texture so that my um, the clouds I'm going to create catch the light in different ways so I'm just stirring these up on my paper plate um, until I get a nice muddy Texture. I'm going to keep adding paint until I have the consistency that I want for this um, the sea spray. So here you can see I kind of have a nice paste. Um, it's not super smooth. You can mix it as smooth as you want or leave it as rough as you want. I'm going to smooth mine out a little bit and then I just have a chip brush here. My chip brush has a little bit of sea spray in it so let me go ahead and mix that in really good. Okay. So for this look, I'm using a sea sponge. This is not your mama's sponge painting anymore, you guys. A sea sponge adds great texture to a piece. You can see I've used mine a lot. Um, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dip this into my sea spray and Dixie Belle cotton mixture, just so I have a little bit on my sponge here. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm really just at this point laying out the base of where I want my shapes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry a cloud from about the middle up over here and then I'll have some going around the corner um, and up onto this top a little bit. For this piece I did choose to paint my hardware and that's because I want it to kind of blend into the background. I don't want it to be a feature on this piece. Um, I'm going to paint right over my hardware. So I'm just laying out the basic shape that I want and I'm going to keep applying and then I'll dip my sea sponge into the sea spray and paint mixture. Now this is where it's gonna look really sponged. And this is probably not that desirable of a look, but as we go through the steps on this piece, you'll see that it starts to change. Right now I'm just laying out the basic shape and texture. Okay, so I'll probably go there with that one. I'm just filling my sponge as I need it. Um, I can mix the sea spray as I go if I find that I need more and I didn't mix enough at first. Okay, so this one will wrap the corner here. Um, I'm using my camera as sort of a mirror. So I like that basic shape. You know, I don't want them to be too perfect looking. So I'm gonna add some inconsistent shape and texture and I'm gonna bring this in and show you guys the texture that this is adding to my piece. So you can see it's got some little bumps in here. Um, you know, it's gonna be a little bit thick and you know, for my cloud texture, I think that's gonna really be, make it more interesting and a little bit more realistic. I don't want this to be like too cartoony looking and the texture keeps it realistic looking. Okay, so we got that one laid on. And now I'm gonna come and, you know, probably do something in the center down here at the bottom. Maybe a little up onto this handle here. Again, we're just laying our basic shape because we're gonna come back and keep working these um, as we go th through this finish. But this is laying out the basic shape of our clouds. And then over here, I'll carry this up onto the top a little bit. Out this way and down this side. So I kind of like this. I like that I've got 
some interest on all of my drawers, um, on my corners and places I can carry around the side of my piece and onto the top. So we're gonna leave this as our basic layout. When I come back next time, we're gonna be adding some color to our clouds. Okay, so I'm back and I have my basic sea spray mixture laid out on my paper plate and now I'm taking my sponge brush and the parts that were a little too hard for me to get into with my sea sponge, I'm gonna lay it in with the um, chip brush instead. So up here, I'm gonna get my sea spray and uh, Dixie Belle cotton into those corners and also into the details on my hardware since I chose to paint the hardware on this piece so it really blends into my overall look. So I'm just using a chip brush to dig this into the portions that the sea sponge was a little too thick to get to. Um, over here, I've got some moldings and the chip brush really gets into those moldings. So this is the same mixture. You can see it's all thick with the sea spray and the paint mixture. And I'm just applying that same mixture now with a chip brush to the areas that the sponge wouldn't cover. Hey everyone, it's Brandy again, and I'm back with this little chest here and my sea spray is nice and dry. So I've got a nice crusty texture on here. Um, I love the layout of my clouds. And so now I'm gonna show you guys the next step. And the next, for the next step, I've got my sea sponge again. And only this time I'm gonna use it with paint. And for my clouds, I'm gonna use the cotton that I used as my base. I'm gonna use some drop cloth. And then I'm also going to use my base color of paint blue. And I'm going to sponge these in in kind of a random order um, to give the color combination that I want. You'll really see the contrast between the two different whites, the cotton and the drop cloth, once I start sponging it in. So again, my sea sponge is nice and damp. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of each of my whites and pour it out onto my paper plate. So a little bit of cotton a little bit of the drop cloth and then a little bit of my paint blue. This is a new container, so let me open this one. Well, that didn't go so well. Open it in 20 steps. Okay. So now a little bit of my paint blue, all on the same plate. So I've got my three colors here. And I'm going to take my sea sponge, which is nice and damp, and add a little bit of water to it, just spraying it with a spray bottle. And I'm going to take one tip of my sponge and dab it in the cotton, one tip and dab it in the drop cloth. I'm going to go a little heavier on the drop cloth because the base I already have on here is cotton already. And then I'm going to take another corner and add some paint blue. And that's going to look like the sky kind of peeking through the clouds in some places. And then I'm just going to come in here and dab at random. The more I layer these colors, the more depth this is gonna get. I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see. Um, I really like where the um, drop cloth is going. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that. I'm gonna keep layering these colors on. This is just the paint on top of the um, sea spray texture that I already have on here. But I'm going to keep layering these colors on the mixture of the whites, the little bit of blue peeking through in some spots. Just really gives a lot of dimension. I'm going to feather it out so I've got some nice airy little spots in here. You know, where it looks like the clouds are nice and faint, I'm going to do that with a little bit more of my cotton. Very faint on my sponge. I'm going to wet my sponge again so that the little bit of paint I have on there becomes diluted. And I'm just getting a diluted version of it. Going over the hardware because I chose to paint the hardware on this piece. And this is fun. I can add in some metallics. I can add in, um, I'm going to come back and we're going to change the color of the blue a little bit mm -hmm. so that when all this is done, it's really just the layers of the colors that give it the depth and dimension on top of that sea spray. Wetting my sponge again, so I can come up here and add that diluted paint. And then I'll show you, I carry, 
I carried the design onto the side of my piece over here. So I'm gonna take those same colors and I'm gonna sponge this all the way around. Let my hand see sponge. Actually here, let me get up in this corner. You can see this. Let's come in a little bit closer so you can see. Yeah, you can see what the drop cloth looks like against the cotton. You know, in the container, these two colors look really similar to each other, really close. But when you put them as a direct contrast, they have that just subtle difference that gives this some depth. I'm going to put you guys down and wet my sponge again so I can feather this out with my diluted paint. I'll use the dry end of my sponge if I've got a little bit too much. I can flip my sponge over to the side I'm not using and use that dry side to feather it out a little bit. Again, another step in this is gonna be to uh, mix up these blues a little bit so it's not so, um, so much contrast. So we're gonna come back and do that in another step as well. Okay, so this is the drop cloth, paint blue, and cotton that I'm sponging in so they all layer on top of each other. Okay, now I'll turn the piece and do the side. So I carried them onto my clouds onto the side and up onto the top as well. I'm um, adding some more cotton drop cloth and paint blue in different areas of my sponge. I try to keep them in the same area each time. Um, see how that paint blue up here? It just looks like the sky's peeking through the clouds a little bit and you need that. Um, so all three of these colors really serve a little bit of purpose. I'm just sponging them on here together. I'm going to get my sponge wet again so I can feather that down a little bit. With a very diluted soft paint. And down onto my leg a little bit. Let's do this one last spot here. So I'm going to dab my sponge again with the same area in the drop cloth the cotton, and the paint, all on my sponge, and I'll come down here and get this little spot. And you wanna keep going over it. I don't wanna do just one pass and then say, okay, done, because that's where you get that really sponge look that looks like 1980s, you know, sea sponge painting, and I'm, I don't want that. So I'm gonna continue to layer them on top of each other. Um, don't try to keep your colors clean and separated. Um, we want that depth and dimension I'm going to add a little bit more of the paint blue on here so the sky is peeking through my clouds a little bit more. Okay, wet my sponge again so I can feather it out. Very faint paint around the edges. It looks very, I, I don't know, authentic, I think. Come down here, I'm gonna get a little more drop cloth for some contrast and some paint. You know, I want each one of these to look a little bit different. I could come in here and darken the bottoms of them if I want more stormy, moody looking clouds. Um, you know, a driftwood might be a nice touch. Digging this into the edge right here. Okay, so I like this mixture that I've got. This is the drop cloth here. You can see, oops, I just scratched it. Wet paint. Okay, covered that back up. So I got the drop cloth. You can see spots of the paint blue coming, peeking through here. Um, and then the cotton with the texture of the sea spray. You can see there's a little chunk right there in the middle. Perfect texture. So that's the next step. Um, I'm gonna come back and we'll dirty up these blues a little bit and that's gonna be kind of it. So you can see how simple it was, but to give a really, really cute look to this little chest. Hey everyone, it's Brandy again, and I'm back with this little chest. I've got my base of paint blue, and then I layered on the drop cloth and the cotton with my sea sponge. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to dirty up this blue, because there's no sky that is, you know, perfectly blue everywhere. And so what I'm going to use for that, I have my same paper plate. I'm going to use a little bit of the paint blue, which is my base color and then a little bit of Yankee blue. I'm just gonna moody up this blue a little bit and it's gonna look crazy at first. 
I'm going to use my same sea sponge, but I'm going to turn it over to the other side. So I haven't washed it out even from my last step. Just going to turn it over to the other side. This is a messy process for your fingers, but that all washes off. So I'm going to dampen my sponge a little bit with a spray bottle. And then just the same as we did with the whites, I'm going to come back now with my dark blue, which is the Yankee. I want very little of this because it's very impactful against these light colors. Okay. And then I've got, so I've got the Yankee up here and my hate blue down here at the bottom. And for this, I really want these colors to be very muted. So I'm gonna go ahead and dampen my surface a little bit. I'm a little heavy on the Yankee blue. You can probably see that. I'm gonna get a little more of the hate blue. The hate is my background color. So wherever I put that hate blue, it's gonna look like it's just my background. I can take and flip my sponge over to a fairly dry side and blend that out a little bit. Um, I want that to be nice and feathery. Make it a little bit more of the haint blue um, and lighten this up a little bit. As you can kind of see, I'm now my blues are getting a little bit more moody. It kind of makes more sense against the whites. I'm gonna come up here and go right into the edge of my clouds. I'm adding water to my sponge because I want it to be very faint where the two these two blend together so spaces like up here i can't really get into with my sea sponge so i will come back and i will dab those in with my chip brush um, around the edges of my drawers too i want to make sure when you open the drawers that uh, this look continues around i'll bring you in here and you can kind of see the more i work this with the sponge those yankee blue spots disappear you know over here we don't want to see this spottiness, so I'm going to keep working those spots. So over here, where I start coming into the white, I can flip my sponge over to where my whites were and work some white out into the blue. So those transitions are beautiful. Like right there, um, it looks like a cloud. Um, like I said, I'm painting my hardware, but I'm going to make sure I get both sides of it, flip my hardware up and do that. Take my white side and flip it over and work in the blue to the white. So down here along this little ledge, it'll be a spot I need to work with my chip brush when I'm done here. So let's come down and do this spot. So I'm gonna take my blue side of my sponge, little bit of my Yankee, little bit of haint. I'm gonna dampen that surface and start sponging those in. A little scary, huh? I've got some spottiness there, but I'm going to keep working that until I like the look of it. Until that haint and the Yankee blue are like, become one in most spots, but there's a few places where it's a little bit darker. So again, I did this on the ceiling in my bathroom at my house. I did it all up on a ladder. My neck hurt after a couple days of it, but it turned out beautiful. Again, not your mama's sponge painting here. This is not the 80s sponge painting we're all used to. You know, I have nightmares about sponge painting, but it's really a beautiful tool to get a nice soft look. I'm going to add a little bit more of my blues to my sponge. Go right up into the whites. I still have the texture from my sea spray. I'm working that in. I can take also the sides of my sponge and kind of smear out spots where it's getting a little spotty. I'll smear those out, get it, dig it right into my hardware. Okay, so that kind of moodied up the blue a little bit. And then I'll come back with my white side of my sponge. I'm going to dampen that. And soften that transition so it looks now you can see I've got I've dirtied up that blue it looks really you know really authentic I think now I can keep adding whites if I want a little bit more contrast here I'll come back to my cotton and my drop cloth I have all my colors out still and work those into the areas that I want to have more contrast to so you can see I just emphasize that the spot here a little bit and a little bit more cotton 
Um, and you can make this, you know, my sky here is fairly, you know, maybe a sunny day, but you, by adding grays and moody colors, you could definitely, um, you know, you can make your weather be whatever you want the forecast to be that day. So I'm going to continue working the blues in here. Um, and then I'll come back. We're going to add some glaze into these details, I think, and then my top coat. And I have a really cute look, and this wasn't that hard at all. Hey everyone, it's Brandy again. So I'm back with this cloud piece, and this step is going to be our top coat. So I have my Dixie Belle application sponge out, and it's slightly damp. I mean, if I squeeze it, no water is going to come out, but it is slightly damp to the touch. So the top coat I'm choosing for this is Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. Um, I really like their satin finish. It's not too shiny. It's just a little bit of um, sheen on it. Um, I like it. It's a really classic satin. So I'm just going to dip my Dixie Belle application sponge right into my top coat to container. Just, I love that the Dixie Belle top coats are nice and thick. And it doesn't mean they set up quicker, but you, I mean, it, it goes where you want it to go. You have more control with the thickness of it. So I just um, coated the bottom of this and then I'm just gonna wipe this onto my piece. So simple. Um, for my corners, I wanna make sure that um, I'm getting all the way into the corner with my clear coat. I'm going to put it over my hardware because I painted the hardware on this piece. Um, the whole time I was painting my hardware, I made sure that I was moving my handles up and down so that they didn't get painted in place um, to immobilize them. So I kept them mobile by moving them throughout the process. And I'm just gonna wipe the top coat on. What I love about top coating is this is really gratifying, is you can really see when you top coat a piece, the change in the color. It just deepens the color so much. So like here with my blue, um, just adding that clear coat on top of it. Now I have some texture here, so I'm going to make sure I'm getting inside all that texture, getting my clear coat over the top. Um, again, moving my hardware so that I can get clear coat on my hardware as well, because that has paint on it. I'm going to dip my sponge again, reload it, and I'm just wiping it on. You want to make sure that it's not gathering in the corners um, any thickness. You can also take a brush after you're done and just clean up the edges a little bit. Just ride it along these corners, um, which I will do on this piece. I also will pull my drawers out and get around my drawers. Make sure my coat is nice and smooth. And then push that back in. Come down here and do the third drawer. And then the next step on this is gonna be, I'm gonna add waxes. I talked about adding some glazes, but I decided I'm gonna use waxes instead. Um, so I will add some Dixie Belle wax, thinking some dark wax to dirty it up a bit, to age it, give it some character, and then maybe a little bit of gilding wax as well. So I will wipe a coat of this onto my entire piece and let it dry. I'm gonna do one coat of um, clear coat, then I will add my decorative waxes, and I will come back and seal it again after that. So in all, it will it will end up getting two coats of top coat, but I'm only gonna do one right now, and then let it dry. So, so simple, just a, dampen your application sponge, choose your top coat, and wipe it on your entire piece. I'm back with the cloud chest again. And the next step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and add a light distressing. And I'm gonna use my sander on this distressing. I like to use my Random Orbital Sander by DeWalt for um, light distressing. And I've got a very fine sandpaper on here. I think it's like a 120. So um, I chose to distress this because I'm gonna add some dark wax. I want it to look old and vintage and classic. And um, so I'm just gonna hit some of the high points, not too much. Um, so I'm going to turn my sander on. It's going to get loud and I'm going to just ride this a little bit with my sander. <laughs>
I like what I've got here. It's a very light distressing. I just hit some of my high points. Um, just looks a little bit worn, but not enough that it looks, you know, like it is found on the side of the road. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Dixie Belle um, Best Thing Wax, and I've got my brown wax out, and I've got my black wax as well. Um, I'm going to start with the brown wax, and I really want to try to um, accentuate some of these details that are on the legs here, and then also get it into my cloudy areas where I've got the texture so that it really uh, brings that out. So I've got a wax brush and I need a rag. So let me grab a rag. Hang on. Okay, I prefer to apply my um, all over wax with a brush. Um, this is just a big soft wax brush that I'm using and I'm gonna dip it into my besting wax in brown. Um, not too much. Dixie Belle waxes are nice and soft, so it doesn't take a lot. And then I've got a rag here. So I'm going to start. Let's come over here and I'll do this, this edge right here. So I'm really going to dig it in because I'm also using this kind of as a glaze where I want it to get into those crevices really well. I'm gonna dirty it up and it looks a little crazy. It's really dark right now. Digging my brush in. I already have a clear coat on this, so it's gonna allow me to really control that wax application. So now I'm coming back with my rag and I'm really wiping that wax back. It's nice and soft still. I have a clear coat on here so I can control where I want this by wiping it off. It's really finding the low points of that, um, the sea spray texture. And whereas you probably didn't notice before that I had all this molding um, with that wax in there, it just uh, dirtied up the paint a little bit and really emphasized all that detail. So I'm gonna do this all over my piece. These edges here will probably take a little bit longer because they've got more detail on them. Again, brushing it off and then coming back and wiping it back. Um, any spots I get that maybe I don't like or I want to thin it back out again, you can come back with mineral spirits and wipe this back. If it's too um, dark in places or um, you don't care for how it looks somewhere. But I like that. It just added a little, a little more vintage looking. Okay, I'm back for my final step on this piece. And my last step is going to be to add some warm gold gilding wax. And I'm going to use that to highlight some of this raised texture that I added with the sea spray and also some of my carvings on the piece. So on the front, I'll put some of my gilding wax. Um, across my clouds, but over here, I just want to hit the high points of that of, of that texture. Add a little bit of gold in there. Like maybe it was gilded a million years ago and it's worn off since then. Um, I want to get some, some shine and different lighting. I love how it looks on top of the sea spray. It really brings out the texture of the sea spray. So I'm going to zoom you guys in on that. So I'm going to finish this piece up with my all over wax and then my gilding wax, and then I will photograph it and you guys will see it from start to finish. Thank you.